Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International with me Keith Johnston. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces, in the presence of the personal representative of His Majesty the King, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the National Security Advisor and Royal Guard Commander, Lieutenant General His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and the Commander of the Special Royal Force, Colonel His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received the Commander of the US Central Command, Lieutenant General Michael Kurila, at Safriya Palace. His Majesty welcomed the Commander and expressed Bahrain's pride in the strategic relations and close historical partnership with the friendly US, which has been built on decades of trust, mutual respect, cooperation and coordination. His Majesty hailed the continuous progress in bilateral cooperation, especially in the military and defence fields, to achieve common goals and interests. His Majesty noted the importance of the role played by the US administration in cooperation with allied and friendly countries in consolidating the foundations of regional and global security, peace and stability, expressing appreciation for the efforts of Lieutenant General Michael Carrillo in developing Bahrain-US cooperation in the military and defence field. His Majesty hailed the efforts of the US Navy in protecting international navigation and securing oil supplies and world trade in the Gulf noting the defence cooperation between the two countries to maintain regional security and stability and global interests. During the meeting, views were exchanged on regional and international developments. For his part, the commander of the US Central Command expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for the efforts in consolidating historical friendship ties and enhancing military cooperation with his country healing the Kingdom's vital role and important contributions in maintaining the region's security and stability. The meeting was also attended by the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr Abdul Latif bin Rashid al Ziani, and the Chief of Staff, Lieutenant General Thea bin Saiga al Nuemi. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, issued Edict 55 of 2023, issuing the general framework for reviewing the performance of higher education institutions, based on a proposal by the Chairman of the Board of Directors of the Education and Training Quality Authority, following the approval of the Cabinet. His Royal Highness also issued Edict 56 of 2023, forming the National Task Force for Information and Population, based on the proposal of the Cabinet Affairs Minister and following the approval of the Cabinet. The Minister of Education, Dr Mohammed Mubarak Juma, received the top students from public and private schools as they had priority in allocating scholarships according to their GPA. The Minister approved the results of allocating scholarships and grants for the academic year 2023 to 2024, which were based on the highest GPA and the number of scholarships assigned. He affirmed that the Ministry has taken the GPA as a single criterion for competition for scholarships. The Ministry of Industry and Commerce, Abdullah Fakhro, inaugurated al Khair Handmade Products Exhibition, organised by the Savings and Loan Society for the staff of the Ministry of Industry and Commerce. The exhibition aimed at promoting homemade products to encourage local industry and achieve sustainable development. The Minister emphasised the importance of these events to support Bahraini families and introduced visitors to the latest trends in handmade products. Visitors praised the exhibition for its wide selection of handmade products and the Ministry's support to local talents by arranging such events to promote the products and businesses. The Chairman of the Board of Trustees of Al Quds Fund and Endowment, His Royal Highness Prince Turkey Al Faisal bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, held a meeting and praised the efforts of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa in supporting Palestinians in various humanitarian conditions. He also commended the various humanitarian projects offered by Bahrain's leadership and people to support Palestinians. The Secretary General of the Royal Humanitarian Foundation, Dr Mustafa Al Sayed, participated in the meeting as a member of the Board of Trustees, nominated by the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa. 
Dr. Al Sayed conveyed the greetings of His Majesty the King, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and His Highness Sheikh Nasser to the Chairman and the members of the Board of Trustees, and the best wishes for Al Quds Fund and endowments of success in achieving its humanitarian goals to empower Palestinians in Al Quds. Dr. Al Sayed showcased Bahrain's projects aimed at easing the circumstances of Palestinians under the directives of His Majesty the King. The Kingdom of Bahrain is preparing to host a large number of specialised conferences and events, starting from this month until the end of this year. This comes as a translation of Bahrain's Economic Vision 2030 by attracting more exhibitions and conferences to activate strategic support for the Kingdom's aspirations in the exhibition and conference tourism industry. The real estate sector in Bahrain achieved positive performance during the second quarter of 2023 in terms of sales of residential units, rents and office space, according to the Real Estate Market Report issued by the Real Estate Consultancy Company. The real estate sector in Bahrain is witnessing continuous development thanks to the unlimited support of His Majesty the King and the follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, which represents an incentive to introduce more initiatives to meet the aspirations of the country and its citizens. In the report, it was indicated that Bahrain has proven itself as an important centre for financial services and a centre for data in the region and remains a major centre for foreign investment. The Bahrain Economic Development Board has succeeded in attracting 410 million Bahraini dinars of direct investments during the first half of 2023. Gulf Air and Bahrain International Airport Company achieved remarkable growth in the number of passengers and air traffic during the first half of 2023 compared to the same period last year. The aviation sector witnessed a state of recovery during the first half of this year with an increase of the number of passengers and air traffic. Gulf Air has recently gained recognition in the global aviation sector for its development strategy, while Bahrain International Airport has gained appreciation in the aviation sector for its commitment to providing a safe, sustainable and comfortable travel experience, which reflects the efforts of both companies and the professionalism of the team working with passengers. Tamkeen announced that registration is now open for the latest edition of its Young Entrepreneur Programme, Mashrui 2.0, which aims to empower ambitious young Bahrainis by providing them with an opportunity to learn from experts. The programme opens new horizons for young participants to explore the world of entrepreneurship and transform their viable ideas into successful business projects. Tamkeen will support youth aged 18 to 35 years that have business ideas or startups by offering them extensive advisory and training support, as well as the opportunity to secure grants for the finalists. The programme aims to provide valuable opportunities for young individuals to acquire entrepreneurship skills, master the process of starting companies and gain the necessary tools to develop their business models, as well as to facilitate their entry into the job market. The Executive Committee of Gymnasium 2023 announced that volunteers are welcome to submit a request to participate in organising the Gymnasium, which is scheduled to be hosted by Bahrain in October 2024 under a royal patronage. It is expected that around 1,500 volunteers will participate in the next edition of the School Games. The committee said that welcoming volunteers to participate in the tournament aims to support Bahraini youth in discovering talents and increasing their contributions to the development of the country in the sports field. The committee noted that the applications will be reviewed by the selection authority to determine qualified candidates based on a set of criteria. And to speak more about that, we were joined earlier over the phone by the chairman of the Executive Committee of School Sports, Dr Ishaq Abdullah, who elaborated further. Um, so the Bahrain Gymnast side, which is ho being hosted under the patent of His Majesty the King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa next year, aims um, to attract more than 5,000 school students from around the world. And why we started our volunteer call a year and a half early before the event is aiming to attract the 1,500 um, volunteers from all over Bahrain. Any resident of Bahrain can join the call, and even internationals that are willing to come and see the culture of Bahrain. Our main aspect today is to upskill the talents available to, to 
to let the future generation, which are the school students, anyone from ages of 15 to 18, the university students, to come and learn from the professional experienced volunteers that have successfully um, held and uh, hosted several events in Bahrain. Um, if, you may, if I may add that Bahrain has successfully and astonishingly, as you could say, um, hosted and managed very, very, very big um, events in Bahrain, such as the Formula One, and it's been managed even out of Bahrain. And as, as seen with COVID-19, how it was all managed by these young uh, Bahrainis and residents of Bahrain uh, to, to host um, and dedicate the smooth line process during COVID as well. So we're confident with the volunteer call today, which we've already re reached 20% within less than 24 hours, um, we will be able to host a landmark event next year in Bahrain. His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister of Saudi Arabia, Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, received a written message from King Mohammed VI of Morocco. The message is related to relations between the two countries and ways to support and enhance them in various fields. The letter was received on behalf of the Saudi Crown Prince by the Minister of State and Member of the Council of Ministers during his meeting in Riyadh with Morocco's Minister of Foreign Affairs, African Cooperation and Moroccan expatriates. The Jordanian Prime Minister Dr. Bashar al Kassane received his Egyptian counterpart Dr. Mustafa Madboule upon his arrival at the headquarters of the Jordanian government. The meetings of the 31st session of the Egyptian Jordanian Joint Higher Committee began in the presence of a number of ministers and senior officials from the two sides. The meetings also witnessed the signing of a number of agreements between the two countries. The Russian military units have managed to take control of seven areas of concentration of Ukrainian forces in the Olshan region. The military media of the Russian army confirmed that Russian military units, with the support of tanks, artillery and aviation fire, were able to advance in the Olshan region after repelling four military counter-operations carried out by the Ukrainian army. At the same time, the Ukrainian forces targeted two supply bridges for the Russian forces with a number of military missiles.